So the big question always comes up, can I use tempered glass in plywood aquarium construction? Yes, but. So that tank's tempered glass, and this tank over here has also got tempered glass. What we're gonna do is go through my rationale for choosing tempered glass in my plywood builds, how I go about reducing, hmm, the risks involved with its use. But before we do that, let's find out a little bit more about what is tempered glass, also known as toughened or safety. So the process of tempering glass involves putting ordinary float or anneal glass into an oven, heating it up to 620 degrees Celsius or 1150 degrees Fahrenheit, then rapidly cooling it down, and that renders the glass tempered, toughened, and four to five times stronger than normal float glass. Wow, not only that, it's a safety glass, so should that glass shatter or break for some reason, it breaks into small granular chunks as opposed to the big sharp shards that normal float glass breaks into. Tempered glass is all around us. Tempered, 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 tempered. So this tempered and those doors behind me, well, they're tempered too. You may even have an aquarium with a tempered glass base, and if you're a viewer of the YouTube channel Serpa Design and you're a customer of Ikea, you may even have a DIY aquarium built at home unknowingly of tempered glass shelves. So tempered glass sounds ideal. It is so strong. So why are so many people concerned about using tempered glass in aquariums? And that might have something to do with reports of, well, it's spontaneously exploding. And I guess that wouldn't be all that great for a tank full of water and fish, would it now? I've never actually seen a tempered glass pane just explode. So in my mind, it's a little bit of, a little bit of hearsay. I don't doubt that it has and can happen, but I've certainly never seen it happen with my pool fencing, my doors, my shelves, my oven, my louvers, my windows, my bathroom, or my aquariums. So why does tempered glass explode? Well, all glass, including float glass, can contain contaminants that are usually derived from the actual stainless steel machinery that's used in the production line. Nickel sulfide is usually one of the main contaminants we're worried about. And the heating and cooling process of tempering glass actually can cause problems with that nickel sulfide to change size within the actual glass itself. And that actually causes the tempered glass to explode from within. And it doesn't just explode straight away. Over time, five to 10 years later, tempered glass can spontaneously just blow. Not only that, tempered glass, although it's four times stronger in the front of the glass, it's a lot weaker along the edge and a blow to the edge of the glass or a chip can cause that glass pane to explode. Why would I use tempered glass in my aquariums? I don't want them to spontaneously explode and dump all the water and fish on the floor, do I now? Absolutely not. In Australia, glass is really expensive. I mean really expensive. But pool fencing and balustrading glass, which is both tempered and 12 mil thick or half inch, are shipped into the country by the container load and are actually rather inexpensive and affordable. Well, I use balustrading glass. I looked at both using pool fencing and balustrading glass. They're both 12 mil or half inch. They're both toughened or tempered glass. However, unlike pool fencing, balustrading has had a secondary treatment done to it, which makes me feel a little bit more comfortable about using it in my aquariums. And that secondary treatment is called heat soaking. Heat soaking is a process where the toughened or tempered glass is put on racks into an oven and heat soaked for an additional two to four hours at 260 degrees Celsius. And that heating causes any panes of glass that contain nickel sulfide to actually explode spontaneously within that oven. And therefore the glass that comes out of the oven is gonna be rendered a lot safer for use in its final application. And heat soaking of balustrading glass is actually a prerequisite for glass installed in uh, overhead situations in Australia. And that's well for, you know, obvious reasons. So with tempered balustrading glass, edge protection is of course very important. So I make sure I use plenty of silicon in these joints to cushion it as the glass moves and contracts with temperature changes. And just like the tank outside, I use good edge protection in the form of polished aluminium or polished stainless steel to protect these corners and the top rim against any knocks from, well, wayward, well, I was going to say wayward baseball bats, but here in Australia, it's probably going to be more like wayward skateboards, or as my boys are getting older, probably wayward beer bottles. There are limitations to using pre-cut tempered glass. The first big one is it's pre-cut. That means its size is set. 
That of course means that I have to build the tank dimensions around the size of the glass panes that I can actually source. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that balustrading glass is a set height of 970 millimeters high. So whether or not 970 millimeters high is tall enough for you monster fish keepers, well, that's up to you to decide. The other big thing about tempered glass, of course, is that you cannot cut it. So you cannot trim that glass to size. Once you've got your tempered glass balustrading, that is the size you're gonna work with. And of course, because you can't cut it, you also can't drill it. Of course you can't drill tempered glass, which is gonna be a big problem if you've got an all glass aquarium. I went and pre-drilled the holes for my bulkheads in the overflow in the rear plywood wall of this aquarium. Now I'm making good headway with this plywood aquarium build, but if you wanna see where all this began, then this video is the one that you should watch next. And if you wanna catch up with the entire build series, then this is the playlist for you.